Now we're live. Hello, everyone. Here's the music. Welcome to another Facebook Live. How are you all? I hope you're doing well. My name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com, where we have lots of free material to help you improve your English. And also, we have a podcast that you can find at inglespodcast.com, and that podcast will help you improve your English. And with me today is Monica. Hi, Monica. Hi. So my doing? name is Monica. I'm okay. Uh, very happy to be here again. Um, so my name is Monica. Uh, some of you, if you don't know me, okay. And I'm the author of Blog del Inglés and Blog para Aprender Inglés, which is the old website. And uh, also, lots of free material in Spanish. So if you have doubts about rules, grammar rules in English, um, you can just visit the website and probably you'll find the answer because it has a lot of material. We also offer Skype classes um, um, and you can visit us at epi.com. Okay, so today we have a very, it, it, I, I think uh, it's easy when you learn it. Okay, it's easy when you learn it, but it seems very complicated kind of yeah, because uh, native grammar structure. acquire it, don't they? And sometimes when you're learning a second language, you have to learn the rules of these things. Yeah. You have to learn it as a rule and you don't naturally acquire it. And you were just speaking about grammar in your blog. I'm sure you're going to, to write a lovely blog post yeah. about indirect questions, which is yes. what we're talking about today. Yes. Um, and uh, why yeah. Because we were speaking before we started and before we went live, and um, Monica was saying that in Spanish you don't really use indirect. No, that, that, that's the reason why people make mistakes, because in Spanish we don't have that structure, and you get confused. No, you don't have to change the order of the words, because the main problem with indirect questions is that you have to change the order. And I... And why do we use them? Well, we use them because we want to be, for example, polite. And it's, it's a way to ask a question in a, in a more polite way. And or you sometimes questions that are delicate questions that you don't want to just jump in and say, oh, Craig, uh, how old are you? And this, 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 <laughs> this is a question that is a little bit rude sometimes, huh? depending on the person. Like when you want to put a bit of distance between it's, yourself. Yeah. Because so yes. maybe in Spanish you'd use usted and not to. Maybe that would be yeah. a way of showing more formality. And, no, and but in this case, not. In this case, um, we can also use the this kind of a statement like "Would you mind?" No, como te importaría si. But um, it is not exactly the same. So the problem comes. Well, why do we use them? Suppose uh, I go to Valencia, which I did last weekend. Okay, and I, I, I live in Madrid, suppose I am there, and I get lost. So uh, I'm walking down the street, I want to go to a bank, uh, and I meet uh, Craig by accident, <laughs> because he lives in Valencia, and, uh, and I say, um, okay, um, we, we, oh, how are you doing? Oh, oh. oh, by the way, would you mind telling me where the bank is? Yep. So normally I would say, where is the bank? Craig, where is the bank? But maybe I want to be more polite, nicer to him. And I say, would you mind telling me where the bank is? So I have changed the order of a normal question and I have made it into an affirmative statement. So uh, this happens all the time in English and we are going to see today the rules of when to use them and you can practice and you can write um, uh, the answers on the chat and we'll try, we'll talk about it and make it, hopefully we'll make a, a light lesson on indirect questions. <laughs> 
<laughs> because we'll try. We'll try. But before we do, before we do that, let's say hello to people who are joining okay. us live on okay. Facebook. We've got Erica. Yeah. Hi, Bertas here. Julieta, Gemma. Hello, Gemma. Yeah. Good to see you again. Um, Milagros from Lima, Peru. Lovely to see you. Norma's here. Sandra and Victoria. And there's a name in Arabic. I'm sorry, I can't read Arabic. I know <laughs> yeah. it's from, from uh, right to left, but I still can't read it. <laughs> and Christine, hello, how are you? Good to see you. And Gloria. So thank you to everyone who's joining us at the moment on Facebook. And of course, hello if you're watching us on the replay after the fact. So let's look at the first thing we need to know. Let's look at an example because um, Monica gave us an example before. Now, you can ask someone how old they are, and if you have a good relationship with the person, really, it doesn't matter. You can say, how, how old are you? That's a direct question. But if you ask the same question to someone who is a stranger who you don't know, that question can sound a bit abrupt, a bit too direct, and a bit too impolite. How old are you? It sounds very <laughs> straight and very direct. So what we can say is we use a little tag at the beginning, and we'll show you more tags later, more introductions to these indirect questions. And you could begin, would you mind telling me? Remember, with would you mind, you need the gerund. Would you mind telling? Would you mind showing? You need the gerund after would you mind. Would you mind telling me how old you are? And that's changed the question from direct to indirect. So that's our first example. And what about the word order, Monica? Well, well I, 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 be, be, now there's a, oh. mm, I don't know what happened. Am I yeah. echoing too? Yeah, you too. I'm echoing too. It sounds okay to me. Uh, can you hear us okay in the chat? Or do we sound okay yeah. to you? Or is there a lot there's of echo? Mm, there's a lot of echo. This, uh, I don't know. What, you see, I... I can hear myself. It sounds fine to me. I'm I'm hearing myself fine. Can you please let us know in the chat if is if it, the audio is yes. okay? Yes, Rafa's saying there's echo. Hmm. There's echo. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, me. I can hear echo too. Okay, I'll go. Maybe if I no. Yes, it's, all the time my my own. And you have no speakers working. No. Not at all. It's the same. They are always have the same. I don't understand. Christine says the problem is only with Monica, which is strange because yeah. last time the problem was with me. Yeah. Today it's you. Yeah. It's just, but I, when I started speaking, there was no echo. It's now. It's later. Let me yeah. try something. Let me take you out and I'll bring you back. Let okay. me remove okay. you and I'll bring you back, see if that helps, okay? So let's say bye-bye to Monica while she disappears for a second. And um, try to bring her back and see if that solved the problem. How's that? Any better? Let's, let's see now. I have to speak. No. I think it's the same. Huh? Uh, hello? No. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay. Indirect questions. No, I still feel. I, I don't hear an echo, but a noise. Mm -hmm. Hear a noise, like a background noise. Indirect questions have the same word order as a statement okay so positive statement that that is the main difference with direct questions because if i say um where are you like a question with the verb to be where are where the interrogative where the verb are and then the subject where are you but if i turn this question into an indirect question I am going to change the order. So I use, can you tell me? That is the question. Can you tell me? And in this case, the rest of the statement is like just added information. Can you tell me where you are? So you can see where is the interrogative. In this case, is. Uh, is, is really a relative pronoun there. Where you are, and that's the positive statement, you are. The order is the subject and then the verb. 
So can you tell me where you are? That is an indirect question. And let's go back and give one more example that we had before. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same that Monica was saying. So how old are you is the is the direct question. Would you mind telling me? Now notice the order of the words. Would you mind telling me how old you are? So how old you are is the order of a statement. Una afirmación, right, in Spanish. So it's the same order as a statement in a direct question. So you're inverting those two words you're changing the order and that's very important with indirect questions and i said before that we've got different ways of beginning our indirect question and here are some more examples so we had would you mind telling me before you can also say can i ask you can i ask you how old you are could i ask you how old you are i'd be interested to know how old you are i'd like to know how old you are would you mind telling me how old you are so these are some ways you can begin your indirect questions if you did not know these make a note and write them down and there are more i'll leave these for monica uh might or may i ask you I was wondering if you could tell me, um, and this I was wondering for people who don't know this expression is me pregunto, me pregunto, si podría decirme, no? would you be so kind as to tell me, that, that sounds very British to me. <laughs> <laughs> would you be so kind as to tell me, my God, I would never say that. <laughs> They're getting longer. It's like yeah, the, very the, long. the more, the more words so you, the more words um, you say, the more polite the expression. Yes. If it's not too much trouble, <laughs> if it's not too much trouble, um, would you mind telling me? So it's more, more information and making it longer to be, you know, to be like uh, extremely polite. So that the person is not offended by the question, because I, I notice your examples are very uh, are questions that are a bit um, too intrusive. Uh, <laughs> we mentioned before, Monica, about asking my age. So you exactly. can say, Craig, how old are you? And I don't mind because we have a, a, a good relationship. But if you didn't know me, you'd probably say, if it's not too much trouble, Craig, would you mind telling me how old you are? It oh, sounds much nicer. And also for my, if it's not too much trouble, <laughs> would you mind telling me how much you earn? <laughs> that is a very bad question. No, nobody, oh, another, saying, nobody dares to ask this question. Actually. Another week, Monica, we have to look at how we can avoid questions. So I would answer that with the question and say, why do you ask? <laughs> yes. So we have. We, we, there are some expressions questions. you can use to yeah. avoid answering a question. Yeah, That's avoid important. answering a question. That's a good uh, topic. But before uh, before we move on, just one more yeah. thing. Did you notice Monica's beautiful intonation? So also, yes, you can use these long tags at the beginning to make your questions more polite. But also, good intonation makes your question sound more polite. So. Could you tell, <clears throat> sorry, could you tell me is much more polite than could you tell me. So if your intonation is flat, it's not Ooh. going to sound so polite. Make sure your voice is going up and down and you're using polite intonation. I wanted to say to thank you to Norma because she she says that she can hear me, the, the, that everything is okay with the sound. And Joao I Enrique think, says. Yeah. Is it offensive? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sometimes it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Depends if, if you're very young, not. But if you <laughs> are my age, is a bit offensive. What I what I notice is that people say, "Oh, you're that old," and you don't and you don't know if it is good or bad. The answer <laughs> because they go, they look at you and say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> also, Jao, when you get to my age, it's offensive to ask a man his age as well when you're my. Age. <laughs> Anyway, let's, so move on. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on. 
let's move on to our next uh, rule, if you like, or our next tip with indirect questions. So if there's an indirect question with is or are, so the verb to be, put is or are at the end of the question. So here's an example. What's your name? What is your name? Notice that is comes at the beginning. What is your name? When it becomes indirect, it goes at the end. Could you tell me, or I was wondering, or would you mind telling me, or I'd like to know what your name is? Is and are go at the end of the question. Shall we try and test you and see if you've got that? Can you please write the indirect question for this question in the chat? Okay. Yes. So where's the train station? Please write the question in the chat with would you mind at the beginning or one of the other expressions. Could you tell me? Would you be so kind as to tell me? May I ask you? How would you finish that question? See who can be the first to write it in the chat. Let's see. Nobody dares. <laughs> oh, they're thinking, they're, they're writing very quickly. It takes a long time to go to Colombia where Consuelo is. So that's why it's Whoa, taken. Christine. Christine Thank is the first. Good. Thank you, yes. Christine. Yes. Would you mind telling me where the train station is? Good. Make sure that is is at the end. Um, here's another one for you. What are your children's names? Hmm. Yeah, uh, Gemma, you got it right uh, about the first question. Gemma, could you tell me where the train station is? Good. Uh, Carolina, could you tell me where the train station is also? Excellent. Mm, Julieta, would you mind? No, uh, you're missing one word there. Would you mind telling me? You, would you mind telling me? You, you cannot say, would you mind where is the, st the train? No. Would you mind telling me? where the train station is okay um soraya correct would you mind telling me where the train station is yes uh okay and norma says it's one o'clock and 17 17 past one in mexico yes wow it's, it's uh, six, six hours or seven six hours of, of difference or yeah more or less yeah would you mind telling me okay christine what what are what are your children's names? Would you mind telling me? Christine, it's spot on. <laughs> Very... yes, well done, Christine. You're on yeah. fire today, as usual. Would you mind telling me what your children's names are? So ah. that are must plural. go at the end. By the way, this is a very similar uh, rule to reported speech. It's also similar in reported speech. Um, yes. Yes, Carolina. Yes, I was going to say yes. Yeah, would you, mind me? would you mind telling me? Would you mind visiting me? Would you mind lending me? So, yeah, must be a gerund after would you mind? Always, if it's a verb. Um, so Raya, I, I, mm -hmm. I wonder where the train station is. Yeah, but yeah, well, the, this is not exactly the same structure, but it's also indirect. Yes, that's um, correct. Good. Yeah. Well done. Okay. So let's move on then. Let's go to our third rule or our third. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Christina. Oh. Christina Romeo. There's a mistake there. Would you okay. mind telling me? Remember this. Would you mind telling me? No. Would you mind where the train station is? So you're missing one word there, one verb. Would you mind telling me? Otherwise, it's not correct to say this. No, this. But if okay. I, I think if I stopped somebody in Madrid because I was trying to find Monica's house, if I stopped someone to ask directions, I would probably say, do you know or could you tell me? I'd, I'd probably make it shorter. So do you know where Monica's house is, for example, or could you tell me where blah, blah, blah is? So I'd probably use something shorter. I'd like to use would you mind, but um, yeah, well, it's possible. Uh, anyway, next, one. Yes. next one. Where are we? Number three. Um, just a second. I've lost it. Here we are. Auxiliary verbs. 
So the auxiliary verbs do, does, and did, when they're in direct questions, get removed. You take them out when the question becomes indirect. Mm. Now let me show you an example. Do you know the time is a direct question with the auxiliary verb do. I wonder if you could tell me what the time is. Where is the auxiliary verb do? It's not there. So take out do, does, did when you say or write an indirect question. Let's practice that. So again, here is our question, direct question with an auxiliary verb does. When does the next bus arrive? Do you have any idea? Da, 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 da. Can you please write that in yeah. the chat and see who's first, see who can do it the fastest? Uh, Norma says, I love this English class. Thank you very much. Thank you, Norma. But you should be yeah. writing the answer to the question. Yes. Even question. if you make mistakes, don't worry about the mistakes. It's This is exactly when you're going to learn the rule. Because you made a mistake, and because we we talk about it, then you remember the mistake. Okay. That's right. So, but if we if you don't do anything, then then you never learn. You have to work on it. Uh, okay, Rafa. Do you I know? No. Do no, you? Well, no. 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 Do you no. have any idea? Do you this? have? Do you have any idea when the next bus arrives? Good. So you're missing the have, Rafa. Yeah. Yeah, you're missing the have exactly. And the, notice there is a do, but it's not part of the actual question. Yes. It's part of the introduction to the question. Mm. Do you have any idea when the next um, bus arrives? Uh, yeah, but but Rafa probably just was typing very fast and forgot to type have. That's that also happens. The, the is, uh, do you have a, any idea, Andrea, where this where the, the street, street is? is. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Andrea, very good. Exactly. Uh, well, that's it. Okay, let's do let's practice know. one let's practice one more. Um, can you change this to an indirect question, please? Yeah, this is in the past tense. Oh, Gemma also well, do you know when the next bus arrives? Carolina and Gemma, could you tell me? No. No, 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 but that's not the same question. You, you, Gemma, she's asking, could you tell me if the next... That's not exactly no. the same question. Uh, you, you're Not if, because if is maybe it comes, maybe it doesn't. You want exactly. to when it arrives. So yeah. could you tell me when the next bus arrives? And be careful, Hema, because it's third person, the third persona, so you need the S on the verb. Mm. If you have the word does, you don't need the S on the verb. Okay. When does it arrive? But when you remove the does, you need the S on the verb. When does it arrive? Or when, <laughs> sorry, could you tell me when it arrives. arrives. Must have when the it arrives, not if the next bus arrives. Yeah. Um, it is, and let me see. Do you have any consuelo? You you forgot any? Do you have? Oh, there it is. No, was it consuelo? Yeah. Do you have any? Ah, she wrote it again. Where the teacher lives. That's correct. Well yeah. done, consuelo. Yeah, that's correct. But the the yeah, she corrected it. Okay. Uh, so the any idea when the train does the teacher live? Elizabeth is doing something like any idea when the this is some it's, it's like an ellipsis. Yeah, <laughs> that's can, also correct. Can, that's fine. Yeah, you can say that when when you're speaking fast and and you're used to it, you don't need to to go with do you. No, any idea when the next train? Any idea right? when the, next, the train? Yeah, it's will... like 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 casual, no? Like. Though if I was asking somebody I did not know, oh, I would, you wouldn't do that. I would say, "Excuse me," mm. at the beginning. Excuse me. It's, any idea when the next bus? Especially arrives? if you're in the UK. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and depends also here in Spain. I think it depends on the on the age of the person. True. Yeah. yeah Christine, that's correct. Could you tell me? 
And Saraya has also got it correct. Could you tell me when you started to learn English? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Yes. An idea where the teacher lives? Yep. Yeah, that, that one when you start. Good. La, <laughs> Las prisas, yeah, come exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, do you want to take the next one, uh, Monica? The okay. final. So here we have another rule. This is our fourth rule because we first talked about the statement and uh, we, uh, we talked about questions with uh, to be, is, and are. We talked about omitting do, does, or removing do, does, did. And then when we're going to talk now about yes or no questions, no? Um, in this case, uh, we are going to use if or whether. So with yes or no questions, for example, are you married? And when there is a no question word, okay? So the question words are when, how, what, where, okay? Sometimes we have questions that don't have any interrogatives. These are interrogative or w, w H questions. This is how the words, no, W words. H words. Uh, when you don't have, when it's a yes or no, and when you don't have an interrogative, then you use if or whether. And whether is the same as if, but when you have two options. I don't know whether it's black or white, for example. No? If it's it's in general for any conditional, but whether is for two options, okay? So, um, oh, hello, Kike. He used to be my student from Valencia too. Hi, Kike. So, uh, yes or no questions. Let's see right. if uh, we can see an example. Yep. Oh, yes, an example. Do you no, have any that, uh, no, do you, do you have any children? Ah, that's, this is a yes or no question. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, how and it's, question, and it's a question without a wh question yes it's not, it's not a yes. who why when yes. What yes do you have any children who question how would you uh, so that, that's a, it's a bit of a challenge this question i think i mean who is no kike um kike is the example of kike uh, uh are you married aren't you no uh that is not exactly this is a question tag yeah, we'll that do is, that a different week, Kike. That's, yeah, that's too Kike, much to do in yeah, one, in one yeah, class. Yeah, this is a question tag. This is to confirm information. Yeah. Now, that's, we're that's, talking today about being polite and asking something in, in a way that is not, you know, is, is not very direct, it's indirect. So Carolina's given an answer. Answer. I was wondering if you if have any children. Have any Perfect. children. Yeah. Perfect. Let's, that's let's it. Give a round of applause. Yes. Yeah, oh, you have the uh, uh, remember clapping. Yeah, well done, Carolina. Excellent. Oh, that's not clapping. That's a noise. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. That I did that. Let, let, let's call. Let's call the sound technician. I think <laughs> he, he's going to fix this. We have a problem with the sound technician. Oh, I think you know when when a student like Carolina says something like that, you have to give applause. You have to say, <laughs> "Oh, it's fantastic." Yeah. Well done. I like it. Um. And Kike says, uh, you have some children, have you? Yeah, but again, Kike, that's... No, again, that's question time. Yeah. Let's leave that for a different time. At the moment, we're practicing um, indirect yeah. questions, trying to be more polite with an indirect uh, question. Christine has a good example, as usual. I'm intrigued uh, to know. <laughs> I like it, yeah. That's a nice... Whether you're married or not. Nice well, I would never say that. <laughs> Because if you are a woman and you ask that to a man, it sounds very direct. <laughs> but also <laughs> intrigued. Intrigued yeah, is a intrigued. lovely word, but it does sound a bit suggest suggest. <laughs> yes. It does sound a little bit like a yes. conspiracy, almost yes. kind of. Yes. I'm intrigued by your yeah, behavior. Intrigued, I'm intrigued like, to know your secrets. It's a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's too direct in a way. Yeah, because you're already you're you're already expressing an emotion. And the grammar is perfect, but I, I'm just talking about whether or not you 
would ask that question, no? and and with in which context would you ask this? No. Let's imagine um, you're in the UK and you go to the civil a civil servant because you need to register for something mm -hmm. official. The person who's taking your details is not going to say, "I'm intrigued," to <laughs> no. but they're also not going to say, "Are you married?" They'll no. probably say, "And could you tell me if you're married?" Yeah. Or we'd like to know if you're married. So, so it will be yeah. a quite a short, polite, indirect question because it's personal information, but they need the information for their form. So they'll probably use yeah. these kind of questions. Soraya. Is all, yeah, it's is very okay, whether you're married or not. Whether like you're married or not. Good. Perfect, Soraya. That word weather is exactly the same pronunciation as W-E-A-T-H-E-R, which is tiempo or clima. Mm. It's exactly the same um, pronunciation, but obviously different spelling and different use. Um, more answers. Since they made the effort to write the answers, I would like to read them all. <laughs> Okay, because, uh, I'd like to know yeah. if you have any children. Perfect, Hema. Let's give him. I'd Hema like to know if you have any children. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that sounds like a noise, Craig. Doesn't sound like anybody clapping. <laughs> it sounds like a noise, really. Just like, uh, okay, um, Kike? Kike, yes. Yes, well done, Kike. <laughs> Look at Rafa. Rafa has a funny example. This is a good sense of humor. I'm looking forward to know. To know you you're you're missing the, the preposition. Yeah. Because I'm in love with you. Yeah, you would never say that. If you say that, the woman is going to escape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to be careful with that because I'm in love with you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shall we try one more? We have another example here. Okay. Oh, yes, I do, but I cannot eat them. Do you like chocolate biscuits? So. Do you like you, you do like chocolate biscuits, but you you can't eat them. No. I cannot have any sugar. I love I love them and I eat them and that's that's my problem. I wish I couldn't eat them. I yes, them. but the best thing is not to have them at home. Because for me, it's like, whoa, I'm all the time thinking <laughs> you eat one and you say, oh, let's go back for another one. Yeah. Another, In general, another. I like chocolate a lot, all kinds of chocolate. Not only chocolate biscuits, just chocolate, you know, chocolate ice cream, chocolate cakes, uh, everything. Chocolate. Andrea is trying a different uh, question. Uh, example, wonder, but it's a good example. Whether you, maybe where you put the keys, not yeah, whether, where you put the keys. I wonder where you put the keys. You could say, I wonder whether you lost the keys. I wonder oh, if you lost the keys. But I wonder whether you put the keys on the table, maybe. It has to be more specific. I wonder whether you put the keys in the car. I wonder whether you put the keys in your pocket. And be careful of the spelling of weather. You missed the H there, Andrea. That's a bit tricky, the spelling of weather, because you don't you 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 have to put two two times the H. Yes. Okay. Uh, some good answers. Let's see. Uh, Kike, I would like to know if you like chocolate biscuits. Perfect. Well done, Kike. That's excellent. Very good. Um, Consuelo, also got it wrong. You, you're I'm missing. I'm wondering if, no, you're missing the if. Hmm? Yes, or the if, weather. Or weather. Remember, always if or weather in these questions that don't have an interrogative and Mm -hmm. It start with uh, it, it's a yes or no question. So two things don't have interrogative. They don't have an interrogative, and it's a yes or no. There's no other possibility, no. Mm -hmm. Um. So Rafa, Rafa, I like to know if you like chocolate biscuits. Perfect. Yes. Well done, Rafa. That's fantastic. Gets a clap. Um, Ingrid. I was wondering if you like chocolate biscuits. Greetings from Peru. Yes, that's a good question. Just spell if I F, and that's absolutely fantastic. I was wondering if you like chocolate biscuits. You could say as you're offering Craig some chocolate biscuits. 
Remember that biscuits is the British word and cookies is the American word, okay? Because uh, some people might be asking why biscuits and not cookies. And Gemma, um, she corrected herself later with, um, I'd like to know. So I'd like, I'd to, like know to know if, if you like chocolate. chocolate. That would be biscuits. correct. Gemma. Or I'd yes. like to know if you like chocolate. Well, chocolate in general. Viviana, would you like, like chocolate? chocolate? No, I wouldn't. Absolutely not. I do not share my chocolate. It's for <laughs> me and me only. So um, very polite question, but I'm sorry to say that I would rather not. <laughs> That's very polite answer. And Christine is using may, which nobody has. May I know? May I know? That, so that sounds strange to me. May For I know? me, it sounds uh, extremely yeah. polite, and, and that's like an old lady <laughs> that would ask that. I don't know. I don't think you can say that. No, but why, can't, why does it sound strange to me? Because of may. Because of may, because you... Yeah, because, because it's a model verb. The the model the, the the most polite model verb is may may yeah. and might uh, yeah. may I know may I know but may I know is oh I, I think I think I know because the example we had before was my may I ask you so yes, you're asking may I ask for, you. you're asking for permission with may you're asking for permission okay. may I sit here yes I, and and I know I is not a permission. No. And you don't you don't ask permission mm. to know something. No, no. So because you just know or don't know. You know exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why it sounds strange. Okay. Uh, so I like to know if you want to share this chocolate. Another way of saying that I like to know if you want to share these chocolate. Cho chocolate. You cannot say chocolates uh, because it's uncountable. Chocolate is uncountable. No? Yeah. Biscuits is countable, but not chocolate. So if you put it before as an adjective, no, um, you can make it countable. But the word is biscuits is the one that are, is countable. Of course, in Spanish, you can make the adjectives plural, but in English, you can't. No. Um, would you like to eat some? Uh, in Consuelo, I would say, would you like to eat some chocolate biscuits or um would you like to eat chocolate biscuits well i don't know why why do you use always some i don't know it's, it's, i'm used to saying some we like to have some chocolate biscuits now it, would you like to have it's, chocolate I think biscuits? It's because it's it's vague language if you don't give a number like exactly. I, i'd like to have four chocolate biscuits that's very specific but yeah. just to be vague not to be specific, you could say some or several. Yeah, algunas. Let's look at one more. Let's try this one. Where were you born is a very direct question. Can you please change this to an indirect question? So come on, you have to work now. Uh, have in Spanish, going back to the example of um, the yeah. civil servant. Yes. They would, we would ask this like directly. Where were you born? Really? Um, they would ask directly this kind of thing. Well, nowadays nobody asks. You just have to fill in forms and all kinds of paperwork and send it online. Nobody's on the phone asking these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the only questions they ask is when you get a robot and um, you you call a fixed line and say, "If you want to talk with the tax office, play, uh, if you have uh, this, uh, press one." If you don't know, you're not press two, if, and you're all the time talking with a robot. But they nobody starts asking indirect questions. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of over the phone, no? That's true. That's true. It's, uh, no? Yeah, I agree. The civil servants. I mean, this was in the past when they used to write everything. No? Christine has it correct. Do you mind telling me where you were born, please? Perfect. Very good. Uh, Gemma, also, would you mind? Uh, remember the no, Jaren. Telling me, Jaren. Remember after mine, always Jaren. Telling me where you were born because you need to change the order, Hema, of were and you. Remember the direct question is where were you born? That's the statement, La Formación. When you make it indirect, you change the order of those two words. So, would you mind telling me where you 
were born. Um, Consuelo, could you tell me where you were born? That's good. Well done. Mm -hmm. um, Just checking with a lot of answers. I yeah. was wondering. I was, I wondering. was wondering where you were born. Yeah, you were born, also mm. correct. Very good. Always subject first and then the verb to be. Not. Could you tell me where you were born? Yeah. That's Excellent. Correct. Ingrid. Uh, Carolina. Could you tell me where you were born? Correct. Mm -hmm. Julieta? No. Could do. No. No. Would you tell uh, me? Would you, yeah. Would, do you tell me? No. Would you tell me where you were born? And again, Julieta, be careful of the word order. You have, where were you born? That's the direct question. No, this is an indirect question. Change the order. Would you mind telling me where you were where? Born. Like an affirmative. I always say affirmative statement to, to, to emphasize the fact that it's the, the order of a positive, not, not a question order. Okay. Rafa, uh, a good one. May I ask you where you were born? Very good, Rafa. Yes, and this is a polite way. This is a polite May I ask? May you? I ask? Yeah. Um, may, may I ask you your age? I wonder, says Andrea. Very good. I wonder where you, you were born. born no, because, where were you born? Because this a is a common a, mistake. Yeah. It's this a is a very, yeah, th this is a very. I can uh, Christine has a good example. I'm dying to know. Oh, she's dying both, to know. I'm dying to uh, know. know. Where you both met. You mean Craig and me? That's a good question. Do you remember? It's ages ago. Where did we meet? We met uh, online. online. I think. You wrote to me. <laughs> I wrote. That's right. I was very yeah, impressed. Because you were, you were interviewing people uh, online. I, I, I suppose Christine is asking about us. Maybe she's asking in general. I don't know. Maybe we're uh, just being extremely self <laughs> She's just practicing her English. Yes, exactly. Uh, I wonder uh, where you were born. I was born in London. I wonder where you were born, Monica. I was born in Santiago de Chile. So, there you are. Yes. Santiago de Chile. Uh huh. Could you tell me where your daughter was born? Very good question, Johanka. Excellent. Well done. Yes. I like, I like that question. Christine says yes, that she was asking about us. I As think. She asked us. Yeah. yeah. She, I, yes, I can't remember said. if I contacted Monica to interview her for my website. Yeah, but or for the podcast, for a podcast, uh, podcast. Uh, many years ago, like, uh, I don't know, seven years ago, it would be. Okay. okay. And that and interview that, is still online. That interview is still on the webpage. If you yes, to. I suppose so. No, it was many years ago. And, and uh, wow. I was always, uh, I knew you <laughs> because I knew already Mansion in English. And I said, oh, uh, I know him because it was very popular. You were one of the first. Um, is a complete pioneer online. You know, you were one of the first teachers teaching online and writing material, no, or writing materials. Especially. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a secret, Monica. I'll tell you a secret. I've never told you this. Just between mm. you and me, don't tell anybody. Yes. Tell anybody <laughs> yes. But in the beginning, um, my business partner, my friend Lewis, who is the webmaster of Mansion Inglés. He said to me, you need to look at this blog by Monica Stocker. It's a fantastic blog. And this was a long time ago. We should start a blog about English and do something because Monica's doing something really, really well. And I actually tried blogging and it was a disaster because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a blogger. And what you do, you do really, really well. There's no way I could ever do what you do. On your blog, on your blog. Oh, but that's not true. Was my, it was my friend and, and my partner at the mansion in Glaze, Lewis, who suggested that. Um, I didn't know that, but. but blog. Yeah, he noticed it. Um, but, the, but the truth is that you're. Probably because it's, you write in Spanish, I think. I, okay, but the, the, um, your web, the website, the mansion in Glaze, I, I think is very well written now. Is the explanations are very clear explanations very very clear so it's uh, it's not true that you're not really a blogger it's just the format that was different but your explanations are very clear 
I found I found the interview. I'm going to put it in the chat. Yeah. Um, Monica Stockoff from a blog para aprender inglés. Yeah, you see that it was July the 11th, 2015. You see, it was a long time ago. That's six years ago. So that's the first time I met Monica at Yes. Go okay. Uh, I mean, you know, that this is a little bit, you know, like a talk show here. Like <laughs> yes. uh, we we it's get into this. gossiping, uh, like uh, this was the, this reality. was the final coffee break. Okay, coffee yeah, break. Coffee break. Uh, okay, that was okay. We we have away. many answers here. Um, so let's look at the comments. Um, I was wondering, Rafa. I no, was wondering again. You mean Cordoba? No, well, sorry, you you, you, um, you missed one. I was Bernardita. There was one. There's a mistake there. Um, yes, I was wondering uh, where you were born. Where That's born? Remember. Problem with the word order. Yeah. If I take out, I was one, Bernardita, if you're listening to me. If I take out, I was wondering, that would be correct. Where were you born? That's the correct. This is a direct question. Where were you born, Craig? You were born in London, right? I was born in London. Uh, yeah. But if you add, I was wondering at the beginning, then the order changes. I was wondering where you were born. And in this case, it's an affirmative statement. It's like when I say, you were born in London, Craig. I know, I know for sure that you were born in it because I was there. <laughs> I was like, I am older than you. So I was there, I was about, I don't know, four, four or three years old and I, I, I was there. So I know, uh, I know where you were born. It's affirmative, affirmative, okay? So you turn it into an affirmative statement, okay? Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Ingrid, uh, thank you. Rafa's Ingrid, question, thank you for coming. you're going to see me in Cordoba. As soon as possible, Rafa, as soon as I can, I will get to Cordoba and I promise if, I get to Cordoba, um, I will let you know that I'm there and so that we can go and have a coffee and and meet in person with our masks and our social distancing. Mm -hmm. Let's finish for the last 10 minutes giving you a chance to practice so you can now ask us questions, but we're only going to ask the questions if they are correct, indirect questions. And you must begin your questions with these expressions to begin indirect questions. So you can ask us anything, but you must begin, in this case, I'd be interested to know. So what would you be interested to know? Ask a question of uh, Monica or, or myself, beginning with I'd be interested to know. Of course, I'd is the contraction of I would. I would be interested to know. So how can you finish that with a with an indirect question? Let's see if we get any questions to answer. Um, Norma has asked a question, but I'm not going to answer it, uh, Norma, because it's not. No, sorry, not Norma. Uh, Julie Berth. Julie Berth Carolina has asked a question, but it is a direct question. So I'm sorry. I can't answer it unless it's indirect. So you so you have to turn it into in the uh, indirect question. I can't answer that unless you unless you begin with I'd be interested to know. And uh, Julie Beth, so you have to you have to make it indirect and then I will answer it for you. Hi Norma, thanks for joining from Argentina. We're practicing indirect questions if you came late. And you can ask us a question, but you must make it indirect using the rules we mentioned earlier. If you missed the beginning, you can go back and see the replay. You can you can see it after the fact on facebook.com slash Mansion Inglés. Ingrid. No, the first one is... Uh... I'd be interested, it's Carolina. Oh, sorry, Carolina's first. Okay. Um, that's a good question, but I would not use transmit. I mm -hmm. would use give, give classes or do, do classes. 
um, transmits too formal for this kind of question. So I'd be interested uh, to know, not interesting, interested. I'd be interested to know how often you two do classes like this. With Monica every two weeks, but every week on Wednesday at eight o'clock and every second week is Monica and there's another teacher, Lynn, who also does the class with me. So next week will be Lynn at the same time and then in two weeks, Monica again. Thank you for your question. Next question. Have you ever been in Peru? Yes, I have. But just in the border, in a, in a city called Tacna, I, I, the, the border, I said the border, but the border with Chile. It's in the north of Chile. There's a, the border with Peru, and there's a border with Bolivia. And I've been in Tacna many years ago. So I don't remember it. I have not well, yet, Ingrid, unfortunately, but I want to visit, so I would love yeah. to visit Peru. Um, and yeah, I have a friend who lives there, so, yeah, I'd love to go and see it. Yeah. Um, and but that was a good question. I'd be interested to know if you traveled last year. Did you travel last year? Yes, I did. I went to France. And you were very jealous because you stayed here. Yeah. But no. the one that does really fantastic trips is him, not me. He goes everywhere. If there's no pandemic, of course. Normally I do, but but yes. sad at the moment I'm I can't yeah. travel. Yeah. Yes. Um I'd be interested to know when your birthday is. Your birthday, Craig, not mine. Uh, <laughs> mine is you... in July. In July. In your birthday? Mine is in May. It's in two weeks. Oh, is this month? Gemini. Twins. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to say the day. Um, let's go to Betty's question. Well, uh, you. <laughs> this is a way to avoid uh, an answer. You just saw I, that. Did you see that? He avoided I, the answer. I'd, 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 I'd be interested. interested to know if you like. Oh, I love it. We I love cook, it. Uh, we we cook Mexican. Well, my husband. Sorry, <laughs> I am not a very good cook. It's my husband who cooks. He cooks Mexican food and he loves it. We love it. Whether you've already been vaccinated. I've had my first AstraZeneca jab um, six weeks ago through my job through the British Council. Um, it came from the UK because AstraZeneca is problematic in Spain. So every employee of the British Council had an AstraZeneca. And today I was told that I'll be getting my second AstraZeneca on the 24th of May. So Whoa, very soon. I'm very happy. Perhaps for your birthday. I can maybe visit Peru. <laughs> if if it's on if it's on that date, which it isn't. Uh, okay, it isn't. <laughs> but well, just uh, let's give you, let's give you another, let's give you uh, another um, let's try that one. Can I ask you or could I ask you? Just to practice a different indirect question beginning so you can ask again ask anything but let's change now and use this can i ask you or could i ask you remember when you speak and you say these indirect questions make sure to use rising and falling intonation can i ask you if you've been to peru for example or could i ask you when your birthday is make can sure i ask you, you exactly. what are you going to eat for dinner <laughs> what are you going to have for dinner I'm going to have what I usually have, which is some bread, some uh, white cheese, some olives, and a yogurt. That's my dinner. Oh, that's a light dinner. That's yeah. a light dinner. Yeah. Yeah, it's a light dinner. I'm on a diet. With a lime. So, um, can I ask you where you live? <laughs> can I? Um, okay, let's see if we have any more questions. I don't see. Maybe everybody left. Already, Carolina is saying goodbye. Bye bye. Carolina's going. Bye, Carolina. Thanks okay. for joining. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for coming because it's being here. Yeah. If it's not too much trouble, would you mind telling me if we'll close the class then and just recap the rules that we said before? Should we go back to reminding people? Oh, the Viviana has. Oh, there's but a question. I asked you how many people. 
Oh, this is very difficult to know. Uh, could you could you tell me how long you've known each other? Good question, Consuelo. Yeah. Well, I said before that we did that interview in July 2015, so Ooh. it's almost six seven, years. Uh, six years, seven. Six almost years. six years. Yeah, we've known each other for six years. Yeah, we yeah. have known each other for. Six. There's another question before that. Could I ask you how many people have learned? Have learned. You need the yeah, ED. ED. Yeah. Um, that's. I said that it was very difficult to know. It's a good question. I have no because idea. Hundreds, thousands, them. maybe thousands. Yes, thousands. I, I hope they've learned. Um, Consuelo, oh, oh, no, we already we've... answered that. Could I ask you what your favorite meal is? I love um, salmon a la plancha y patatas a la pobre. Oh, <laughs> very good. So, fish with um, fried potatoes and onions that's one of my favorite meals. What's yours? I like uh, spaghetti bolognese. Italian. Italian. Nice question from Elizabeth. Could I ask you when you decided to be a teacher? Yes, before I came to Spain. So probably um, 26 or 27 years ago. That's when I decided to be a teacher. Could I ask you, Monica, when you decided to be a teacher? Uh, about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I decided to be a teacher. Um, I don't know. I I thought for me it was easy to teach. I I always but I first I was first a lawyer, nothing to do with teaching. <laughs> but then my life changed, and that was about the year two thousand. Uh, and I decided to ha have a new start, and then I started teaching. Uh, I was started teaching in companies. I started teaching English in companies, and then. Well, I did some courses before, and then I just went on and on. And I started the blog, and then I started teaching online. So when I decided, but about 20 years ago, that's a long time, and you even more time, 26 years ago. 20, yeah, 25, 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Ingrid's asking about languages. Can I ask you if you speak Spanish? Very good question, Ingrid. Well done. I speak Spanish very badly. Monica speak, speaks excellent Spanish because she was born in Chile. And there's a similar... And I was born in Chile, but I, mm, I left Chile when I was young. I was about 13, 12, and I lived in the United States. Then I lived in Venezuela, and then I lived in Spain. So my accent and my whole life has been in Spain. So I love Chile, but I also love Spain, and I feel very Spanish. And so I have a, like a mixture. I'm 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 from everywhere. You're a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, it's like a cocktail. Yes. Bernadita, can I ask you to do yoga? You mean live, like now on this on this Facebook page to do yoga with you? Um, maybe maybe next week. Do you do yoga? That's true. Do you I do? Yeah. I, I don't do yoga. No. Oh, I don't know why I thought that. No, I, I, med I meditate. I do meditation. Oh, okay. But I don't. Okay, do yoga. But and you go biking. That's your favorite exercise. Biking, yeah. no? On the bicycle. Yeah. I think we're almost out of time. So before okay. we say goodbye, we're going to go back and just remind you of the things you need to remember. Yes. Use, yes. Um, okay, let's go. Indirect uh, questions. So the first one, remember that indirect questions have the same word order as a statement. Okay, for example, um, how old are you? Would you mind telling me how old you are? So you change the order uh, from the direct question and make it a statement. That's rule number one. Rule number two, Monica. In indirect questions with is, are, the verb to be goes at the end. Okay, it's, it's kind of the same thing you just said. So, for example, uh, do you know where the bank is? So, in a direct question is, where is the bank? It's at the beginning. Where is the bank? Do you know where the bank is? It's at the end. Okay? Remember that. Very important rule. 
and three. three auxiliary verbs do does did take them out remove them you do not need those in indirect questions but remember if it's a third person question like for example does the bus stop here the bus is it so it's to third persona when you make it indirect you need the s on the verb does the bus stop here becomes could you tell me if the bus stops here so remember that s on the verb so do does did fuera and the last one is yes no questions with yes or no questions for example are you married and when there's no question word or interrogatives such as when how what where use if or whether for example i would like to know if you are married and that is a yes or no question so that is why we use if or whether so remember two things yes or no questions and no interrogatives then we use if or whether and that's it because that's it one last thing i want to say yes. i don't know if you have noticed that um craig says in uh, how do you say i say indirect and craig says indirect indirect both are correct just in case because <laughs> one is american and the other one is british i, I didn't and, know that. And, and and yes and in direct and direct you can say that yeah, same. Yeah. Exactly. okay so okay well that's it Thank you for watching. We're going to say goodbye now, let you go and have uh, breakfast or dinner or lunch, wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, Monica, tell them about your blog. Visit blogdelingles.com. You'll find lots of material. And Blog for Aprender Inglés, that is still around there. The old blog. Okay, please visit and you'll have lots of material to learn English and Spanish. And... Um, if you want to study for free, go to mansionengles.com where you can find courses, listenings, material, quizzes, lots of uh, years uh, of information and exercises and material for, to help you with your English. And we also have a podcast that you can listen to for free wherever you listen to your podcasts uh, or at englespodcast.com. Thanks, everyone, for keeping us company. Let's hit the music. Thank you. See you next time. Stay safe, be careful, yes. and practice your indirect questions. <laughs> bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.